I'm Stefan, I'm probably older than the rest of, of the people here in the room. Uh, I work as a software engineer for IBM, currently in service delivery during the day. During the night I work on uh, IBM Verse, uh, hashtag it could be worse, that's our email product. Uh, it's currently written in Dojo, which led me to the conclusion I must have been a really, really bad boy in my last life to get that punishment. Um, when people talk about V8, what comes to my mind is something like that one. Oops, luck. That's a V8. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so I was looking and I said, are there alternatives and uh, options do you have? I said, okay, let's have a look, look when I want to run JavaScript, what are my options actually? Um, then have a look at Nasan, which is kind of funny because I'm German, I know what it means. Um, a little bit of thought of, on performance and then uh, the main attraction is I want to talk a little bit about WordX, which is one of the implementations how to run JavaScript on uh, the JVM. So there's a number of options of okay, VA, every, uh, VA everybody else, Spider Monkey Chakra, whatever. What you see in the, in the last column is that they run in all, dif uh, all in different environments. So, um, and the, the, crowd, the, the V8 actually was a little bit shoehorned into running on the operating system out of, out of uh, Chrome, like they liberate the JVM, uh, liberate the uh, JavaScript runtime engine, but um, it's not the only game in town. Um, oops, okay. Um, the, is that the right slide? No, that's the right slide. Okay. <coughs> um, we had starting with a project in Mozilla, um, the first JavaScript engine in the JVM called Rhino. And in, in Java 8, Oracle rewrote the whole thing and called it Nason, which is German for Rhino. And um, which is kind of funny because like I say, it's not fully up to date. So it's ECMAM A 5.1. It's my, mostly called inside of JVM based applications. All the blue things, uh, when you look up the slides later, there are links to the respective sources behind. And um, the most interesting part that it's a spawn from hell, no, I mean, you can spawn uh, threads in, uh, in JavaScript to run multi-threaded natively, and you have access to the, um, to the command line using a JRun script or J J JS. Uh, the interesting part, it has full access to all, all sorts of Java classes, but it's not really part of the NPM universe. A, a little word about that in a second. So, how does that look like? Well, I need to sit down and look, look at my glasses. Terminal. So, I can go and say JJS, and I get a, a prompt, similar to when you just type node, and then I can say, like, say, var x equals 7. Oh, oops. Huh? Oh, I shouldn't do colons, okay. var x equals 7. And the big difference is, like, say, you know, in Node.js you get undefined, and here you don't get any prompt back. But that's the same thing, and then you say, okay, I do print x, blah, boring. Uh, and the, the, the nice little thing is you don't need to uh, type in um, uh, control C, you have a proper exit function. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course. You can go and write a JavaScript program. I, I, got, I got a few ready-made here, so hello world, no, you know. Uh, first, let's have a look how it looks like. Oops, hello world.js. Uh, so, oh, that's, oh, I gave it away already, sorry. Um, when you run J JJS, hello world, let, let's, let's use the usually one, the node one. Then um, I get a reference error console not defined. Yeah, console.log is not available in uh, the JVM, so you have to cheat a little bit, and you see the cheating <coughs> code already up here. Um, I said, if I don't have a console, then please load the console. And <coughs> console.js, which is kind of funny as, as well. Uh, oops, cut console.js. Um, actually, simply uses, can, we, can you see that? <laughs> Java Lang system out print line. <laughs> Which is, this is kind of hilarious on one side, on the other side it shows you simply, let's say, hey, anything 
that is in, ja is in Java uh, can be used in there, which is kind of already points in the direction for the use cases. If you said, okay, I want to go and introduce my fellow um, old backs in the company to do a little bit more dynamic languages, but they won't. We got five million lines of Java code. Um, <laughs> That's your entry into the system. So that's that's one of the the main uh, the main points there. So ooh, where's my presentation over here? So can you execute the Java program using Rust? Yep. Okay. Yep. Sure. It's valid. You can. That's a fine thing. You can. From the JavaScript you run in Nason, you can run a Java program. From a Java program, you can run a Nason script. So up, up to you. Um, so, and then that was what we just say, like say Node.js, we know, console the log, hello world. Uh, in Nason, it's print. And then the universal one is you have this little funny little, little thing that says, okay, console, uh, you simply emulate the console.js. Huh? So the, the other thing is what I find pretty cool is uh, when you put at the beginning of your line, you put uh, uh, you point to the JJS, you can use JavaScript as normal shell scripts and run them on the command line uh, uh, like your bash scripts as well, oh, which is kind of, uh, they were there first before Node.js. <laughs> and then to your question a little bit, in Java, you get this script engine manager, and then you say, get the engine by name, which then goes and picks, uh, executes the JavaScript. And inside you see, with Lang Java, right, you get a class, and you can call any method of the class. Um, I haven't tried running a sub-main before, but I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work. Um, so, of course, like I said, uh, no J uh, the JavaScript runtime on its own is boring. So you need classes, and uh, Nason and NPM are no friends. Huh? They're a little bit like the German and the French. We had two world wars before we started to become friends. <laughs> Still not sorted out. Any French here? <laughs> no. Oh, it's okay. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> so there is a number of... Um, uh, there's a reason why I use the German and the French example. There's a number of modules around uh, where Nason was shoehorned in to support NPM, and like a world war, there are a lot of dead bodies at the end of the day. So Nodun is dead, um, NVM, NPM is dead, Nason Common JS I think is still around, and Avatar nobody knows because it's sponsored by Oracle, and we, we all know, like say our friends in Oracle, if there's no database license to be sold, they're not so interested. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the other point that comes up quite regularly is, hey, what's about performance? We all love uh, V8 because um, it's nice and performant, and then you see it, oh, na oh NASA, ugh. <laughs> that's how long it takes. Long is bad, short is better, and this is the V8. Huh? But it's a, that is the, the funny little thing, cold and warm. You, you've seen the two lines with the JavaScript initialized JavaScript engine. The whole thing is like a good old, uh, a good old car, takes a while to warm up. I remember, like I say, when I grew up in Germany, I had one of these Mercedes diesel, no? baby talk dirty to me, diesel. Um, and in the winter, it took 10 minutes before it, you could move. <laughs> Similar with the, with the NASA engine, I say, it takes a while to start. No? It's almost like a, like a Zen engine. Meditate. Oh, let's do something. <laughs> so, but when you when you look closer, what's quite interesting, and there's all, as I said, the, the blue lines are all the the, the links to uh, the sources. Um, they ran a comparison. Of what happens if if I do things many 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 times? The yellow one is still Node, the king on the block. But then you realize once the once the initial delay in the startup is, is gone, then the performance is actually, the average performance is actually quite okay. So depending on what you do, um, the, uh, the performance penalty might not be that bad. One interesting aspect, which especially in that article, they realized they watched the CPUs, and they, re they, they figured out that uh, NASA automatically is starting to use multiple CPU cores. Well, like say you're in an OJS program, you have actually have to 
do quite a bit of exercises before um, before um, your application takes advantage of um, multiple cores. Um, reading, I'm not going to click on it. These are two um, links to this huge web performance test where they had all these uh, um, uh, applications where uh, a NASON-based framework, which I'm going to introduce in a second, came out top for a number of the, uh, of the tasks in there. Which brings me to my favorite little toy. Um, oops, go ahead. Wordex. Um, irony, irony, Wordex is a tool that runs on the, J uh, on the JVM, and if you install it, you use NPM. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. Now you can use you can use Maven to install it, you can use Gradle to install it, and you can uh, a few other things. Well, I have found, since I got Node.js anywhere in the machine, I found that uh, quite, uh, quite easy to do so. It's mainly sponsored by Red Hat, so uh, that's people who, who don't do uh, uh, open source as a hobby. So not like Oracle or IBM. But no, no, we do a lot of that. <coughs> uh, and it's, the interesting thing is uh, two, three things. It is polyglot. So for me, it was easy. In the beginning, I wrote my stuff in Java, and then I switched over a little bit JavaScript, and I doubled a little bit with Ruby. Um, and you can write different modules in different languages, and then they can talk to each other. The, the modules they, uh, are called verticals. Now you can guess how would you call the test modules then? <laughs> a little bit more laughing. <laughs> Um, there are a bunch of blueprints and examples there, so there's quite extensive documentation. And I had to pick, based on the time, one feature I really like. And what I like is the event bus. So what you can do is you, you write your little vertical, and then you test the vertical properly. <laughs> and it has a, an event bus, so I can go and publish a message on an event bus. And I, there can be any number of subscribers who react to that and then you get a message back. The interesting part on that one is that um, they, um, an event bus that can be the same machine, it can be a different task, it can be a cluster of machines, and it's still the same code. It's just a, a startup option. When you want to run anything Word, uh, WordX, you have a WordX command line, WordX run, starts an application in the foreground, WordX start, starts an application in the background. So you can go vertex start one after the other. Uh, the only thing that I haven't figured out yet, um, I didn't bother, is like, where does it write the console log if you run it in the background? It doesn't write it in the foreground screen. Um, let's have a quick look. So I have, oops, I forgot my names again. So I say word x run. And then I say, hello world uh, server. Yep, up. So it takes a moment, huh? so, so that's the uh, contemplation second. And I said, OK, succeeded in deploying the vertical. And I think I put it on 8080. Oh, proper people do curl. Huh? Curl local host 8080. And it says, Hello from World uh, Word X. Let's have a quick look at the code. Uh, I have that on the thing. So that looks suspiciously familiar. Uh, create HTTP server, uh, request handler. The only difference is you don't get request response next, like in Ex Express. You only have a request object, and the request object has a dot response. But the general principle is like so if you've done anything in Express you will find yourself very familiar in the in the WordX environment as well so that's that's a that's an easy one um, the next one I say what I told uh, event bus uh, I can write I I take the event bus I said I'm a consumer to some address uh, I handle a message I do something with a message body that can be string that can be a JSON array a JSON object whatever and then I can actually can reply to that. And as a sender, I simply say event bus publish, is like the, whoever takes it, or event bus send, first one who listens to the address gets it. For instance, you've got like say 10 database connections sitting on 10 machines, and you say event bus send, one will get it and process it. 
so you can nicely can scale out uh, your, your capabilities. Let me just show you the one. So I have, um, which one was that? Uh, event bus one. So in this one, you get again, you get this little, um, uh, <coughs> um, this little moment to um, where it waits. Um, the example code is all on the on the um, on the GitHub, and my sender says, "Okay, uh, I fire out the request. This one comes comes in from uh, the, um, the processing, and then I say reject the proof, reject the proof. That basically I throw a, a, a random number whether you can do it or not. So not very not very exciting. Let's let's have a quick look at the code." Um, so <clears throat> I just go and says, okay, um, I use here event bus set periodic. So I have a, um, a something that is 10,000, so that's every 10 seconds. It creates a, uh, a request and it sends it out. And then um, it says, okay, console log has fired. And a little bit up on uh, uh, not bother showing you that uh, I have the the, uh, the receiving function which then uh, proceeds the result. I have a second variation of that. So event bus number two does the same thing roughly. The only difference is that I also start a web server. So it's, it deploys a vertical every ten seconds. It will send a request out over the bus to the receiver. But I also can go and say, okay, um, I say, curl the host, I want ice cream. And then it says approved, you can have ice cream. Oh. <laughs> so, because um, that's an easy, down there, there is a bunch of stuff coming out. Let's, let's have a look a little bit at this code. Uh, but look, no, no buy a license message. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I buy you one. What is that? Talk yes. Samples. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Yeah, they up there. So and then I learned this trick. What was that? C control plus. Yeah. Yep. So you see that in li line number five, I said uh, I need the event bus. In line number six, uh, I said I want to listen to the following address. It's very fancy. It's just a string. Right? Of course, like say, being being used to Java stuff with a lot of dots in between. I used the uh, I used the Java package type of name, but you could say the fancy uh, the fancy string I want to listen to. Then I said, okay, handle that get me the message body. In this case, um, I'm uh, checking is, did he ask pretty please? <laughs> then I approve it, otherwise I, I throw a random number and I reject it. And that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing, what I need to do. Whether it's on the same task, whether it's on the same machine, or whether it's on a different machine, it doesn't matter. It's only a matter of how I start the vertical. So when I said I want to run it uh, across multiple machines, then I need to start the vertical with a minus cluster option. So they, they can listen to each other. The interesting thing about the event bus, <coughs> there's libraries available um, that extend the event bus into client-side JavaScript. So you can go and say subscribe, which under the hood you use socket.io. Uh, you can subscribe to a message from an event bus on the server side in your client-side application. Well, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I like that a lot. Um, quick one, just just for the for the completeness sake. So, not 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 this one. So it's wordx.io. So that's the that's the web website where this the stuff is at home. And what I found quite helpful is, let's say you got the documentation, and then you got oh, let's say okay, core web data access and what what have you. In all in all languages, so they have built-in modules uh, for, like, say, for the usual databases. Nice asynchronous uh, asynchronous modules 
Mongo, uh, all the relational databases. You keep checking, <laughs> does it work? <laughs> um, they have um, a ready-made JWT, so for your authentication you just can, can issue a uh, session token. Um, they have all sorts of um, other stuff there. And then when you go there and I said, okay, like I want to learn about the core, then you get the li little lecture on, oops, core is here, where is it? No, I should, I simply look at this one, it's easier for me. You get a li little lecture on asynchronous and the event bus and writing TCP servers and datagrams and DNS and whatever. So there's is a, a lot of stuff in there. What I also like, very close to the idea how we, how we work in JavaScript, everything is a stream. So you have a stream API where you can go, go make sure that, that all your, um, uh, uh, your applications are, don't depend on filling in a buffer and then spitting out a complete result. So especially the HTTP clients, both the client as well as the server have stream APIs so you don't, uh, uh, you don't run out of memory so fast. Um, yep. Right. Back to the slides. Almost done. Um, use cases. Uh, I, me uh, I mentioned that before. Um, you have a, a Java shop, and they kind of double and say, "Oh, um, especially with strong administrators, no JS on my server over my dead cold body." Hmm? <laughs> I heard that a number of times. Actually, it's funny, like in the. In IBM, we use a lot of Node.js. So um, if IBM does it, actually, this shouldn't happen. But no, no. oh, when we get that code, so you get in there. This, the second thing is like, say, we see that a little bit in the financial industry. They say they have huge code bases, very customized Java code. They said, how do I integrate that easily? So you said, okay, uh, with with WordX, you can do that relatively painlessly, um, and then you want to scale out, like to so torch a lot of cars, of course. Um, yeah, that's roughly what I wanted to torture with you, <coughs> what I want to introduce to you. Questions? Can you instantiate the like, objects of the Java class inside as, as a JavaScript? Sure. Uh, it's called new. And how, sorry? It's, it's called new. It's called new, right? And uh, <coughs> what, what happens about the... Uh, prototypal inheritance versus Java style inheritance. Uh, yeah, so, flash of course, like I say, you have to be a little bit careful. So, so one of the things is when you go and call um, Java methods, um, you, will, you will be in trouble for anything where you have, like, say, one call that takes 27 different data types. So, the, the NASA engine will try to figure out, okay, so. What I have there looks like a string, quarks like a string, so I, I call a string version of it. But he said, okay, um, I have an object as a parameter, and it's kind of, hmm, is that an object as a string? So it's not a blind flight, so you have to be very, very clear what you want to do. And what I've, what I've done a number of times is like, say, writing a little wrapper to say, okay, my, my, my Java wrapper has exactly one function, so I said, like, say, execute something as string, execute something as request, execute something as color, uh, to make sure that I don't get uh, get into trouble with the overloading. For, uh, that is the kind of um, the the send in the in the gearbox between JavaScript and Java. And uh, what happens with the stuff like pointers and things that are just Pointers in Java. If you do that, um, the boogeyman will get you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't do pointers in Java. No, we don't, we don't write C there. <laughs> huh? So it's very simple. What's not available, you need to encapsulate. Very simple. So um, also be very very clear. Like I said, there's there's more languages around. Like um, that. That wrap that emulate Java uh, JavaScript in Java, and um, I have seen people who jump between Java objects and JavaScript objects back four, back four, back four, and then they're surprised why their performance sucks. Uh, so keep them 
keep them nicely next to each other, like East and West, Germ uh, East and West Berlin. There was a bridge in the middle, one bridge. Huh? And then they took the wall away. It's so horrible. <laughs> OK. Um, regarding the JVM, can you use the JavaScript there also to integrate with other languages that are running in JVM? Like yeah. So, so what, what the WordX guys did, so they, they got Ruby, Groovy, uh, JavaScript, and um, Java. They have, the, uh, when you look in their repository, they have the, the message around is that if you want to uh, compile it for another language, the adapters, uh, they have the instructions there. And I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, in WordX version 2, currently is version 3, they even had, they had bindings for JSON, uh, Python on Java, as well as for Scala. So, so if you love Scala, it shouldn't be a big deal to go and ex extend WordX there. Okay, more questions? I oh, know you want beer. Um, any other any more questions? <coughs> for that? Huh? Uh, in general, if you just take something in the wild uh, that's written in JS and throw it on the JVM using this. So what you what you need to uh, say? What's quite interesting is what the article guys did on the project Avalon, which points a little bit in the direction. They have a list of um, JavaScript modules uh, from npm they found that that were working. So uh, any J, uh, any npm module you'd want to try that requires a native uh, a library will fail. So you have to replace that piece of code with uh, their respective Java methods. What's quite interesting, before um, Netflix actually drank the complete uh, Node.js Kool-Aid, they were uh, very actively, and I, I guess they still do that, actively using uh, WordX for some of their processing on the, on the Java side. That was basically the their entry drug into the, uh, into the JavaScript world by not leaving the, the JVM, which they understood very, very well. Uh, behind. Okay, any more questions? Thank you so much. Thank you.